Midge and Susie, it's a love story, really. It's a, it's a relationship like any other. And at this point, you know, Susie has kind of helped lure her away from the Joels, from the Benjamins, and said, come with me. It's almost a proposal. Trust me, I can give you the life that you want. I can give you the career that you want. And frankly, I have no idea if she can. And she has no idea if she can. And she's kind of like a duck paddling like crazy and trying to maintain a smooth composure on the surface. But I think she's terrified. She's, she's terrified that she's going to fail. But she's so hungry. Um, and within that, you know, their relationship is challenged this year. There's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs. And uh, we're not sure if, if Susie's going to fail and if Midge is going to fail. In terms of the future, I, I, I really would like for Susie to always be a bit of a, ro of a wily coyote to a roadrunner. I'd like her to constantly run into walls and fail and have anvils fall on her head because I think it's, it's more fun to play a character that's struggling than, than just have, has achieved and is done. The time that this show started, I was kind of done. I was done doing on-camera work, was like walking away from it. I had moved, I was like, and then Amy sent me this script and was like, please audition for this, and how could I not? It was such a cool character and such a rich world, and her writing's amazing. So yeah, she, she forced me into it. Amy and Dan are incredible. I mean, you've heard that from many people, not just me. They have remarkable insight into people, into life, into family, into comedy, and uh, the entertainment industry. And so they took all of, all of their knowledge that they had and created this incredible phenomenon that is now bigger than them even, you know? It's, it's incredible. I think, in my humble opinion, that this season is more exciting than one and two put together. Everybody's out of their comfort zone, and so you're going to see a lot of people spinning plates, especially uh, Miss Borstein's character. So yeah, it's a great fun, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Sophie has been doing Sophie from Queens uh, as her caricature, if you will, her gimmick. Um, and, uh, you know, meeting Midge kind of gave her the idea, maybe I don't have to do this. And um, maybe I can be that great, um, you know, thespian that I fancy myself. So we're going to see her maybe dive into something like that. Um, but I don't think she ever leaves Sophie from Queens too far behind, but I think she thinks she's leaving her behind. <laughs> I love being a part of a team. I never want to be up there alone. I love working with these actors. They're all just consummate professionals and su uh, supremely talented. And, you know, Dan and Amy know how to pick them. I think there's something about the late 50s, early 60s style-wise and the simplicity of it. And you know what I loved about it? I, mean, I was born in 1960, so I don't necessarily remember this. But, um, you know, everybody, all the men wore a hat, or the women wore a hat and gloves. And, you know, when you left the house, you dressed. Nobody went out for coffee in their pajamas like I do. It's brilliantly written and there's no way to mess it up, really. You know, we show up on time and try not to be the one that screws up the eight-page wonder. You know? It's a great deal of fun and, a, and a, just a ridiculous lottery-winning joy to be a part of this show. Joel was essentially the catalyst for everything that, that has happened to this point. So, um, and, and, and I think he, he feels deep uh, regret and shame. And so ever since then, he's kind of been trying to make up for it. And this season, you'll see him continue to do that. It's evolving for sure. I, I, you know, I don't know if that means romantic or otherwise, but it's certainly evolving. And, and she's on tour, and he has to take care of the kids. Um, but, uh, but as far as, you know, romantically, I, I, I don't know. That's, that's uh, for you to find out Friday, I guess. This is just the type of show where you could sit back, relax, and just forget about all your problems, or the world's problems. You're just kind of immersed in it, and, and uh, it's so visually stunning, and the, the, the acting is amazing. Um, you know, it's just, if I wasn't on it, I'd be a fan myself. Although I, I'd be insanely jealous of whoever got Joel. 
it's about a Jewish family, but you don't have to be Jewish to enjoy it and or to identify with it or to relate to it. It's 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 about you know at the end of the day it's about family, and I think that's a universal theme, and everybody uh, you know everybody can relate to that. I think she grows more in this third season than she has in the past two. Her growth wasn't entirely linear and was sometimes a little slower than, than some may hope, including those in her life. But I think she's being forced to confront the idea that she can't be at the center of everyone's universe all the time, and that everybody has their own lives and their own struggles and their own passions and their own dreams, and they have to be allowed to pursue them whether or not she's involved. It's gotten even bigger. We, we created Vegas in Queens, we went to Miami, we built a plane in Steiner Studios. It's, it's been pretty bananas. We're just trying to keep up. The way that I would describe season three is that the New York world expands and worlds collide. And I am both a part of the expansion and the collision. <laughs> What's so wonderful about the Maisel team is that everyone genuinely cares about the story that we're telling. And so even when we have the table reads, it's like the whole family gets together and is really invested in everybody else's arcs, everybody else's stories. And it really feels almost like theater in a way, where you're really building something together. Um, and that's a very special experience in TV, I would say. I love this character. I mean, I, I because really it's the other characters that I get to play off of. Marin just does something so unique, so special. They have a super complicated relationship, which seems to get even more complicated over time. Rachel is just a consummate professional. Uh, the, the writers keep giving us great material. I get to work with Kevin Pollack and Caroline Aaron who play Moish and Shirley Maisel. And uh, in fact, in season three, we get to see the, those two, uh, the in-laws kind of really mix it up a lot more. So that's delicious. Uh, there's just a lot of things to love about playing this part. Abe is going through, uh, has gone through a bit of a midlife crisis. So we see at the end of uh, season two, he's just leaving his career and he's, uh, trying to trying to get back to his center find you know he feels like he's sort of lost his way in his life and uh, he doesn't exactly know where he's headed but he just knows he needs a change I don't know what the magic uh, you know magic powder is that these guys have put together people just I think uh, they like hearkening back to this time period that's a bit of a respite and an escape from our our current issues. And um, I know I, what I love, one of the things I love about the show is that we're in a period like prior to cell phones and computers, or, or personal computers. So I just find that really refreshing.